Hi, my name is Brian from Marine Protection Systems. We're going to undertake a basic cathodic protection test today, going through this uh, beautiful Riviera 39, starting from the transom, working all the way to the front of the boat, going through all the metal components. Um, the testing equipment we're using at the moment is a MPS reference electrode. We sit in the water without any protection caps, sitting about a meter below the waterline. We tie that off so you don't lose it. Um, We've gone a little bit more advanced. We're using a scope meter, a 123B by Fluke. It's a very high quality meter. It picks up AC, DC, DC ripple. It's very, very, very sensitive. So it shows a lot of variation very quickly. So at the moment we've got connected onto the back transom studs. And then we go through and check rudders, shafts, props, engines, and everything else. So testing at the moment, we're sitting on 812 millivolts, sitting on the back of the anode. The anode has pacified on this, and it's not too uh, working too well. Uh, this boat's always fit, also fitted with two shaft anodes and two 70 mil rudder anodes per rudder. So it is slightly overprotected. Um, when we overprotect boats, we also see a lot of uh, excessive growth and the coating's coming off. And this boat's only been in the water for less than two months and it's already showing um, the growth and the coating starting to fail. So on the back transom, we're showing 820 millivolts. I'll pull it off, then go and check uh, port side rudder. We're showing 624. Uh, it shows that we've got a, a bonding issue there. We'll then go to starboard side. 625 and then we'll go up towards the engine room. So now we're in the engine room, it's fitted, this particular boat here is fitted with 3208 cats, very large engines for this style of boat. I believe this particular boat was built for Caterpillar America. Um, so now we're gonna go through and check different things. So we've got battery negative, we go through and check that voltage, um, which is showing 589. 589, we go to the engine shafts, Port side. 584. And then through hull fittings. 604. Yep. And we go starboard side, stern tube. 361. Yep. So it's all, all over the shop, this particular one. We've got a shaft strap by Marine Protection Systems. 576. Yep. And the shaft itself coming up. Five seven four. Yep. Um, starboard side engine block. We try to get a really nice connection. Five eight five. Five eight five. So, what do we want to see with a bonding system? We want to see it equal all the way through, from the stern of the boat all the way up to all through hull fittings. Um, I did a quick check earlier and checked the main raw water intakes on this. This particular uh, is fitted with stainless steel and bronze. Uh, those through hole fittings are showing 120, which is the balance between stainless steel and bronze. We checked the bonding cables, that all failed. So the direction going forward would be to replace the bonding system, get it all back up to scratch, um, and then reassess the bonding system to make sure it all works perfect. Then we look at anodes. On this style of boat, I'd probably remove the shafts and rudder anodes and have one transom anode. Depending on the environment, if it's sitting in salty water all the time or brackish, we would probably go over to the proprietary Maddox anode. And this client here has previously used Maddox and he gets a lot less growth on his running gear. Therefore, he feels less fuel and maintains speed through the life. He uh, previously had uh, another boat which he got 18 months and very, very, very little growth. Then the slip line changed from a Maddox anode to a zinc and within two to four weeks, it already started developing a lot of barnacle growth. Um, and yeah, so that's why we'll look at probably putting Maddox on this boat and make sure the bonding system's good and away we go. I'm gonna show you really quickly to a real quick check to see if you've got shore power isolation or whether you've connected it properly. So a typical galvanic isolator or an electrolysis blocker should give you about between 200 and 400 K ohms, that's 200,000 ohms of resistance between the shore power inlet earth and the bonding system of the boat. Now we know this boat's got some bonding issues, but essentially if I go and connect AC earth to 
DC, the bonding system for you, I'm seeing 13 ohm resistance. And the difference there is that there's no blocker working. So what we'll check now, we'll go to amperage, DC amps. And what we're gonna check now the, is between short power earth and DC earth, current flow. So that means there's no blocker in this loop, which therefore, when you've got no galvanic isolation, what it then does is it enables your boat to become either the anode to protect the infrastructure, marina, your own private marina, or your boat accepts current from other boats, damaging coatings and damaging anodes as well. That's why it's really important to have an electrol blocker. Watch on the next episode, we'll have one installed and we'll show the difference between connected and not connected. We're going to show you really quickly on how to check to see if you've got a shore power influence with related to your boat plugging into shore and this can happen if you're on a private owned marina plugging into another boat or plugging onto a dock um, so we set up our multimeters and it can be a high quality fluke using a marine protection systems uh, reference electrode uh, we have the boat disconnected we get our baselines now unfortunately because the bonding system is not so good in this We've seen a few, bit of different results with regards to movement of water and all that. But right now, what we're going to do is just have the reading disconnected, which is sitting at 595 right now. And what we're going to do is just plug in with the shore power actually turned off, but still connected. So here we go. And it is a bit... So you can see we change quite a lot. We're fluctuating. That means we've got current exiting the hull of the boat. And instead of our anode protecting our boat only, it's now protecting infrastructure, other boats as well. So it's really important to have an electrolysis like blocker and uh, a proper earthing system through your own boat. So just to recap, we've done some serious, serious testing on this boat. We've gone through the bonding system from the front to the back. We've looked at shore power isolation. We've looked at onboard electrical influences. So what needs to happen on this boat now is a new bonding system fitted with tin copper, minimum of 10 mil needs the shaft straps installed correctly, needs a shore power isolation system using an electrol block of NPS. Um, anodes, we're gonna remove most of the anodes. Less is better sometimes than more than too much. So we're gonna go and throw a Maddox anode on the transom, get rid of the zincs on the shafts, the zincs on the runners. Like I said earlier, this owner had previously really good experience with um, a Maddox anode system. He had 18 months with no growth on any of his running gear nor hull. Uh, slip play without telling him, change it over to uh, just a, a plain off the shelf zinc, um, and he actually started developing growth within four to eight weeks. So, we're going to do all these changes, we're going to recap, and we're going to come back to you with a bit of an update later on. Got any questions? Give us a call. Thanks.